I believed that I could fix it and we could improve the business. If you're going into a turnaround situation, you have to have a pretty clear plan what you're going to do. Every business needs a strong team. Uh, it's not about individuals, it's about teamwork. Peter, very good to see you again today. We're sitting in the Seagrave room at the Royal Automobile Club in London, and behind you is the splendid trophy cabinet that includes the British Grand Prix trophy, won by many Englishmen that includes the current Formula One world champion. It's therefore perhaps fitting that we will talk about winning today. So we first met in 1996 to discuss the managing director role for First Choice Holidays. What attracted you to the company, knowing that there were a number of operational issues? This was a company that had a significant market position, had been rebranded, but was badly run. And I believed that I could fix it and we could improve the business. Uh, and that was the attraction for me. If you're going into a turnaround situation, you have to have a pretty clear plan what you're going to do before you get there. And for me, it was quite simple. It was ensure that we could sell the appropriate number of holidays profitably, and in our industry, too much capacity gives you huge problems, to ensure that we bought our hotel capacity in the most efficient way with the right numbers at the right price, to have a cost structure that was appropriate for the size of the business and you put those elements together which is all about the operational integrity of the business that was the plan and that's what we executed immediately and it was very clear to everybody what we were doing and I think clarity is also important in terms of execution yeah every business needs a strong team uh, it's not about individuals it's about teamwork what you normally find in any business, there are some great operational people, and that's what I found. Uh, and the problem was at the, at the senior leadership in terms of the wrong direction that, that, that the business was, being, uh, was going in. And therefore, strong internal colleagues supplemented by bringing in some very important people, and probably the most important recruit at that time and it was interesting, Nick, because you had brought the person in just before I joined was Richard Prosser. Mm. And he made a huge difference because he understood overseas and the whole overseas operation. He and I taught the same language straight away. Mm. Well, the industry needed to consolidate and how would we participate in that consolidation? And our view was very clear that we would either sell our mainstream business, the first choice business, and keep the specialist portfolio, or there was only one merger candidate for us. Mm. And what happened in terms of the sequence of events, and as you quite rightly said, one potential buyer, or in fact two potential buyers in the form of Thomas Cook and Air Tours, decided to merge. And therefore they were neither were potential buyers. But what happens in an industry when it consolidates? One move often creates another move. And the other move, which would not have happened without the initial uh, consolidation of Thomas Cook and Air Tours, was TUI and First Choice mm. merging and creating Europe's leading tourism business. Yeah. Uh, and that was absolutely the right move for us. Uh, and yeah, we played a major role in consolidation. And we twin tracked each other through the competition process. They were about four weeks in front of us. Uh, that's not for the faint hearted when you're going from four to two in terms of how a regulator may react. But because the industry had changed so much and particularly with the growth of online carriers, they said actually, this is not going to be in any way against the consumer because there's so many alternatives in terms of how you create a holiday. Yeah. But TUI is now the world's largest leisure tourism business, serving over 30 million customers each year, offering holiday experiences in more than 180 destinations. TUI operates six airlines with a fleet of over 130 aircraft, making it the fifth largest airline in Europe. 13 cruise ships, 300 hotels with 210,000 beds. The group has annual revenues 
of 19 billion euros and operating profit of 870 million euros. So how complex is TUI? TUI is big. Um, maybe I say it's not that complex because I've had 30 years in the industry. It's broken down in, in, into very clear business units and therefore we have some very big leaders. I mean, when you look at some of our divisional CEOs, they could be PLCs in their own right. Yeah. Uh, and that's how we run with a very flat structure uh, and, 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 and a very important, strong divisional structure. Uh, and that makes the business very manageable. Uh, and we, are, we our aim is to inv uh, 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 avoid complexity, because if, if you ever say to someone, well, it's all very difficult, this is a very complex business, people say, well, why? Mm. Uh, we, so our business, it's all about scale, big power brands. It's not about complexity. What we regard as absolutely paramount, uh, and particularly in the digital world, is differentiation. And differentiation for us is about offering exclusive holiday experiences. And because of the size of our business, we're able to commit to fill whole hotels and create concepts. So the example of the Sensatory is such that we, our business is large enough, in fact, in the UK, to fill these uh, hotels. The experience in the Sensatory, it's a club atmosphere. So there's lots of entertainment, and that's entertainment during the day for children from crash up to teenagers. It's entertainment if adults want to participate um, in, in volleyball or, or shooting or archery or whatever. So there's lots going on during the day. It's about, in the evening, the children putting on their, lips, on their show and mum and dad all very happy. And then it's about West End shows in the evening. Mm -hmm. It's about a choice of restaurants. You know, we have six a la carte restaurants in a sensatory. You put all that together and what do we achieve? High levels of customer satisfaction because we're giving our customers what they want at great value uh, and high levels of repeat business. Mm. That's how our model works and it's all about delivering the experience that our customers want. Uh, and it, and, and it's, it's that balance of quality and value for money because both are so important for all of us today. And sadly, Peter, we live in a volatile and unpredictable world such as Sharm El Sheikh, Tunisia, and most recently Paris have witnessed this year. The Tunisia attacks deeply affected TUI. How did the company cope with this tragic event that claimed over 30 of your customers' lives? This is the, without doubt, the biggest tragedy that I've ever had to deal with in my business career because it's loss of life, it's injuries to our customers, it's the heartache for all of those families. What I do know, though, in a situation that we had to experience and went through as a result of this terrible tragedy, our organisation is second to none. Uh, we know how to react very quickly. We know what the priorities are, which is looking after our customers uh, and getting those that weren't injured home as quickly as possible, liaising with uh, loved ones who, who, who had lost members of their family uh, and the whole organisation just gets into gear. We had the most experienced team in resort to deal with this tragedy as it was unfolding and we did it very, very quickly. And you know, you don't want to build a reputation in this way, but by God you want to be very proud of what your people do uh, and that's what we did. I will never forget this. This will live with me forever. Uh, and it's cut right into the heart of our organisation because it, it was 95% uh, of customers that were killed were from the UK. Mm. So our UK business, mm. uh, it, it will take a long, line, long, long time to get over this shock. Yeah. Sadly, it is the world that we live in today um, that events happen and I hope to God we don't see an event like this with loss of life again, because it's awful beyond words. So you stepped down, Peter, as Joint Chief Executive in February next year. 
but will become a member of the supervisory board before becoming chairman. You're chairman of the Royal Mail, president of the Family Holiday Association, and you have been recently awarded an honorary doctorate from Bournemouth University. You've got enough to keep you busy. I'm very happy. Uh, <laughs> I can't suddenly stop. I am ready to hang my chief executive boots up. Uh, I've been planning this for the last year. Success in terms of co-CEO was me working my way out of my job and handing over to Fritz Hewson. Uh, and I think that's gone extremely well. For me, it was then about doing something different. So, you know, I wanted a big challenge. Uh, I wanted to join uh, an iconic business, and I've done that in becoming chairman of the Royal Mail. And then I also want to put something back into society uh, and, and why I'm president of the Family Holiday Association, which is helping people that don't have the opportunity to have a break and that may be a single day out uh, and that's what the charity is focused on that's what we want to do and I think because of my contacts within the industry uh, I can help and that's fulfilling and I've got a little bit of capacity left should something more should something interesting come along to augment what I'm already doing as one of the longest serving CEOs in the FTSE 100 what do you think will be your legacy from TUI I think, uh, I think a number of things. Uh, I think, first of all, a legacy is about ensuring a smooth succession and transition of leadership. Uh, and that is measured in the following 12 months, 24, 36 months, as to whether it all got gone very smoothly or had the wheels fallen off. Uh, and I firmly believe that we've got a very seamless succession. So that's, that's the most important aspect uh, in terms of when one's running a public company. And also, I'm very proud uh, of, of having created the largest integrated leisure travel tourism, tourism business in the world.